You'll have to excuse the change in location for this video. Apparently there's a TV license inspector rampaging through the village, so I'm just doing what any other Irish person would do by hiding my TV in the attic. I know what you're thinking. I served my time inspecting TV licenses in the past, but that doesn't mean I'm exempt. So while I avoid the TV license guy, I may as well pass the time by checking if these programs are actually worth my money. This isn't looking good so far. Irish television isn't exactly known for being exceptionally entertaining in 2019, and most Irish people would use their money to light the fire before using it to fund programs like this. But public service broadcasting in Ireland hasn't always had such a stained reputation with the general public. TV was a brand new concept in the 1960s, and the breakout success of Irish television was The Late Late Show, hosted by the late broadcasting legend Gay Byrne. The Late Late Show was unmissable with Gay Byrne at the helm. His natural charisma intrigued the nation, and viewers were treated to a fantastic variety of guests and musicians week after week. So this begs the question, what the f*** happened here? It's safe to say that The Late Late Show doesn't have the cultural influence that it once had. With a dwindling audience and reduced funding, the show tries to spice things up from time to time to keep the ratings high. And that is where Valentine's Day and country music specials come into play. But I think the only ratings that these special shows increase are emigration rates, as most Irish people ensure that they're either not watching TV or not in the country from 9.30 to 11.30 on those two Friday nights. Neither of these annual shows have the greatest reputation among Irish viewers, but I think they reflect how Ireland has changed over the past few decades. For better or for worse. Since the old days where it would have been controversial to even mention this horrible word in the public eye, Irish television has progressed when it comes to freedom of speech. But at the same time, it has regressed in almost everything else. And special editions of The Late Late Show are perfect examples of this. But firstly, we're going to focus specifically on the Valentine's Day shows, and investigate why exactly they're so critically panned every year. We have to pay for this. February 14th is a lonely day for millions of people, and the only thing that spoils Valentine's Day more than erectile dysfunction is The Late Late Show. If you've ever watched a regular episode of The Late Late and complained about the lack of sex, then do I have a program for you. The entire concept of The Late Late Show Valentine's Day special obviously lends itself to being silly, but it still subverts expectations for all the wrong reasons. It's basically Tinder in the form of a talk show, acting as an annual convention for people who are too horny for their own good. Let's take a look at the infamous 2018 edition of the show. Right from the beginning, it's clear that there is isn't a sober person in the audience, and I honestly can't blame them. That nightmare of an opening comes to an end after what feels like an eternity, and we jump into the highlight of the Valentine's Day special, Blind Dating. And I think some blind viewing is appropriate, because I can't imagine anybody watching this without a blindfold. The idea behind this anonymous Q&A session is ripped straight from my carly, but it features a slight twist. This guy has been drinking too many dirty pints, so his mother is asking the questions on his behalf. But that doesn't stop this girl from talking about big rides on national television. I can't believe the audience is applauding this. This group of wild animals become completely unhinged later in the show, as we witness a live proposal. Fantastic life event for this lovely couple, but the crowd just had to start another Olay chant. Applying to be a guest on the Valentine special is the ultimate way to sacrifice your dignity. A perfect example is this guy serenading a stranger out of nowhere, and she definitely doesn't look uncomfortable. The Valentine's Day show is a roller coaster of wholesome and outrageous moments. On one end of the spectrum, we're treated to some elderly couples discussing their relationships. That's pretty cute. But on the other end, there's an advice segment titled, Sex in your 70s. You can't have sex in your 70s. I imagine that this would be entertaining for those of you who are into the whole sexual intercourse thing, but this is going against my moral values. But now we've moved on to discussions about road frontage. Finally, some civilized conversation. Definitely worth paying the TV license fee. I'm getting pretty distracted by this comedy genius struggling to position himself. The show ends with a performance from Sunita, and I've never seen so many people pretend to enjoy something all at once. Now the backup dancers have started taking their tops off. They better get dressed before my parents catch me watching this. They strike a final pose as the show goes off the air, so like they say in Sunday Mass, thanks be to God, this shit is over. And just like that, I have survived watching a Late Late Show Valentine's Day special, and I somehow managed to keep my sanity intact. I'm going to wear that as a badge of honour. This is the kind of show that can't be watched without a sick bucket at the ready, but I must admit that it's a great sign of our progress as a nation. Irish people can talk about sex on TV in 2019 without being treated like some kind of antichrist, but a show like this would not have done well in the 60s. However, that is a topic for another day. Alright, I'm getting pretty sick of all this sex talk, so I'm going to switch over to something different and fresh. I want to go back. The Late Late Show Country Music Special is our punishment for scaring Garth Brooks away from Croke Park. But it's a decent alternative to traditional forms of torture. That's the only compliment I can give this show, because despite it having a niche fanbase, it makes me want to convert back to alcoholism. Late Late Show Country Specials are all about the music and less about bollocksing around, but they still have most viewers thinking the same thing before the second hour. Make it stop. 
But if I can watch people give sex advice to 70 year olds, I should be able to survive this country music show without even flinching. I'm just remembering now that country music isn't really my thing, but that's just one song. It doesn't reflect the entire show, so I can definitely endure some more country music. And more country music. Country music. Country music. Country music. I I'm sorry, I can't bring myself to watch this. I've suffered enough for this video. So that was incredibly painful and repetitive viewing for me, but the audience was vibing pretty hard. So maybe I just don't fit into the target demographic, and there's a generational conflict here. But where exactly does the country music special rank in relation to other Irish TV programs in the quality spectrum? Well, the Sunday game and Telly Bingo are obviously going straight to the top tier. True masterclasses in cinematography. The big big movie and the 9 o'clock weather are easy high tiers. The Angelus is pretty mediocre. The Lotto is a solid D minus, and the Late Late Country special is right below Mrs. Brown's Boys. But there's another special edition of the Late Late Show that is in a league of its own, and actually deserves a spot in the top tier. Every year in the weeks leading up to Christmas, thousands of Irish children are faced with the big question. What's Santi bringing? And the ultimate way of figuring out what you want from Santi is to watch some toy reviews on the Late Late Toy Show. It's one of the biggest Irish Christmas traditions to watch this show every year. And if you're expecting me to start slandering it, I'm afraid that's not gonna happen. The Toy Show isn't just a TV program, it's an event. By all accounts, it should be as much of a cringe fest as these two abominations, and sometimes it is. But there's something about the Toy Show that makes it so much more special and unique. The Toy Show is one divisive program when it comes to public opinion. You either love it or you can't stand it. And personally, I wanted this content in injected into my veins. It's easy to criticise children on TV who are more talented than you, but if you can take off your cynical hat for just a few hours, you'll find some great entertainment and heartwarming moments in the Toy Show. For many Irish people, the Toy Show marks the official start of the Christmas season. It's such a uniquely Irish programme that's difficult to describe to anybody outside of the country. The best explanation I've seen is that it's our version of YouTube Rewind. Every Toy Show is packed with performances, celebrity appearances, books and video games, Ryan Tuberty potentially injuring the kids in horrific accidents, and toy reviews I guess. It it isn't a perfect show by any means, and sometimes I have to watch it through my fingers. But there's a difference between the infectious cringe of the toy show and car crash television like this. Some of you may wonder why anybody over the age of 12 should watch a show about toys aimed at children. Well, one thing I learned from this year's edition is that the toy show is about more than just the toys. It's all about the children and highlighting their talents and their personalities. The toy show's most memorable moments typically have nothing to do with toys. It's the magic of a kid meeting their hero and reuniting with family members that creates those unforgettable memories. Sure, not every celebrity appearance is created equally. Some kids get to meet Ed Sheeran and Katie Taylor, other kids are unimpressed by the surprise, and these guys met a woman dressed up as Lara Croft and didn't know how to react. This continues for 30 more seconds. The Toy Show was a great platform for talented children from around the country to get their big break, as they are presented as the main stars on the most viewed program on Irish TV. If they have a special talent, a great personality, or an interesting story to tell, the whole nation falls in love with these previously unknown children, and they become national treasures in one night. Most of us will likely forget about the toys after a few days, but kids like John Joe Brennan are still remembered fondly a decade later just because of how naturally lovable they are. This year's Toy Show had some of my favourite guests ever, as Sophie and Sophia provided us with some of the most emotional moments from the night, and we were treated to some absolutely spellbinding magic from Magnificent Molly and Outstanding Oshin. How the fuck did he do that? No matter what anybody else thinks of it, I'll always enjoy watching the Toy Show, and it's still one of my life regrets that I never applied to be a guest when I was younger. These kids are shadow dancing to Old Town Road on national television. I want to be part of this. When you're watching the Toy Show, I think it's important to remember that for every single kid who appears on your TV screen, there's proud parents watching their child give the biggest performance of their lives. Footage of Toy Show performances are invaluable, and even though certain clips could potentially be used to embarrass some of these children in 10 years' time, every moment on the Toy Show is a timeless memory to some people, which makes the show that much more special. And now that Gabe Byrne is no longer with us, we can appreciate the Toy Show as a program that he pioneered back in the 1970s. Gabe Byrne's influence played a huge role in the Toy Show becoming what it is today, so he leaves behind an incredible legacy. What originally started as a small segment about trendy Christmas toys became a cultural phenomenon, and because of Gabe Byrne, the Toy Show is an Irish Christmas tradition that will continue for years to come. The Toy Show is a true gem of Irish television, and while it certainly has its low points, it's the most popular show in the country for a good reason. So it's making me reconsider my stance, and I think I might just go ahead and pay this TV license. I take that back. Here's a little lesson in trickery. This is going down in history. If you wanna be a villain number one, you have to chase a superhero on the